the historical journey is, is very interesting of what it took for the Bible to get to us now, today, and travel the world. And a lot of people went through a lot of persecution. A lot of people were killed over simply translating the Bible into English, being found in ownership of a Bible. It wasn't until um, later on after the King James Bible in 1611 that normal people were allowed to even possess a Bible. Get killed for owning a Bible. It was only allowed to be owned by pastors and priests. You know, in fact, at one point it was called the Great Bible. It was so big, it was called the Great Bible, and it was chained to the pulpit and only allowed to be in churches. And eventually, Bibles got smaller, individual people could have them and read them themselves so that you, didn't, you weren't required by God to pray through a priest or through a pastor but you were allowed to have a Bible in your own home. I mean, it's incredible, just yeah, the that journey was, that of the Bible. revolutionized everything. Yes, and then, of course, of course then... Made it so accessible that you could have your own relationship with People God. like Tyndale, you mm -hmm. know, like Gutenberg. I mean, incredible people that maybe not celebrated enough for what they went through to make it so that you can go to any store, go mm -hmm. online, and buy a Bible and have a Bible this it, afternoon it, it, of any translation you want. It allowed for the Bible to be totally accessible yes. to people. And we are hoping that That's for right. this generation that we are, have created something that will allow the Bible to be totally right, accessible right. for this generation. This is a, a you know, a, a, we've brought it to life on TV screens. It'll come right into people's homes. Uh, many people are visual learners and it's an opportunity to reach, particularly young people, I think, because we paid great attention to, you've asked about our interest in his, the history of the time, but our, our entire art department and our costume departments and our prop departments were very accurately researched. So from the smallest prop to the largest chariot, we tried to create pieces that would have been accurate for the designs yes. of the times that the people were living in. All of the costumes went through a what we call distressing. We didn't want anybody to look like they just stepped out of a dry cleaners. You know, these were rough times. The terrain was rough. We know we lived over there for five months. I had sand in places I didn't know existed. I came back with sand in my teeth. It was so gritty. It was rough for those people. Lives were hard at those times. So we tried to capture all of that in the movie.